Welcome to another action-packed episode of the Top 25 Pearls of Pulmonary Pathology. I'm Kevin. And I'm Max. And we're going to take you on a journey through mucinous lung lesion. Neoplasm. Neoplasm. Perhaps. Maybe it's a neoplasm. Maybe it's benign. We'll see. Okay. So, the history here is that a 68-year-old woman is found to have a five centimeter ground glass opacity in the lung. She's asymptomatic otherwise. She has no prior medical history except that she says she had something taken out of her colon about 10 years ago. Mm. That sounds concerning. Yeah. I a don't know how that would relate to the lung, but a polyp? she doesn't know. She, she doesn't, doesn't remember. Know. She was unconscious. <laughs> As we're all happy we are during those yeah. procedures. I don't know if it was resected. I don't know if it was a big tumor. I don't know if it was a tumor at all. Yeah, so so um, a needle core biopsy is done transthoracically. And some beautiful core, cores are obtained because the clinician is pretty sure that this is going to be a malignant tumor. Wanted to make sure it got, they got a lot of tissue for potential molecular studies. Of course. And they did. I mean, this is a very nice... You can't complain about that tissue. ...needle core biopsy. Now, I could complain that this particular tumor seems to be a little patchy in its distribution throughout the cores, right? But how can you control for that? Right. They're doing the best they can. Yeah. So we have this needle. Yep. Should we look a little closer? Let's go in and look. All right. I'm thinking those darker pink-blue areas are... They're going to be where it's at, but it's always nice to look at the yeah, background wow, at lung, that. normal. Yeah, some blood, fresh blood. Not very exciting. And then wow. uh, some mucinous columnar epithelium. Yep. And it's interesting. It's like right there sitting on the alveolar wall. Yeah, that's a weird place to have mucinous columnar epithelium. So if I was thinking this was bronchiolar epithelium, like bronchiolar metaplasia exactly that could be a possibility look at the way it's kind of got little branching structures here like right here it looks a little nodular and we know that pbm as some of our colleagues like to like to abbreviate peribronchular metaplasia pbm can be a little nodular in the biopsy i don't think it would account for a five centimeter ggo ground glass opacity that would be the biggest pbm we've ever seen Right. Five centimeters. I don't think that can happen. But certainly right here, you could That's understand how people would be worried about peribronchiolar metaplasia, and we have cilia. Yeah. Wow. So there may be a bronchial in here. Perhaps. Could there be a bronchial and something else? Is that possible? It's I always so. possible. Well, the initial read on this was mucinous epithelium history of colon something let's get the panel the staining panel the staining panel so you do the staining panel it comes up mucin positive well i'm glad we got a mucin stain because I, I, I was concerned that this might not be mucin and a pas <laughs> and a pas with diastase of course so we, we're convinced it's mucin okay. that's good feel good and, about that and ttf1 it's ttf1 negative, negative. Napsin, negative. Negative. Cytokeratin 7, negative. Cytokeratin 7, negative in a glandular lung lesion. Mm. So, CK7 and 20 were done as a combo. The 20 is positive. So well, tw- she has that history of the colonic lesion. Yeah, yeah, and that would be 20 positive. Right. So let's get a CDX2. Maybe we should do more stains. Reface that block another time. Let's go back to the block. CDX2. And th- these cores should have been put in separate blocks, shouldn't they? If you really thought it was two. Probably. Okay. You could go back to our molecular pearl. Talk. Yeah, because we have a whole, we go crazy with a diatribe right. on that whole business. So revisit that one. So CDX2. CDX2 gets done and CDX2, do we have any result? CDX2 Can we is look positive. At it? Can we look at it? Yeah. But first I just want to mention the P40 that was done here too. All because right, right. Because there is... Epithelia, bronchial yeah. epithelia, maybe it's all part of the same. Exactly. Maybe this is all peribronchiolar metaplasia, and P40 will highlight underneath the 
uh, epithelium, the respiratory epithelium, as part of that peribronchiolar metaplasia. We talked about this in another one of the pearls. We, we did talk about that. Earlier. So I'm going to show you three stains here. TTF1, CDX2, and P40 on this case. Wow. Okay? okay? Here's the P40, what we were just talking about. Extensive basal cell layer underneath the areas of peribronchiolar metaplasia. And yet, look at the mucinous epithelium here. Nothing. Completely no negative. Completely yeah. negative. Yeah. Okay? Let's go to the TTF1 stain, highlighting some benign pneumocytes in the background, highlighting the respiratory epithelium, the non-basal cells in the respiratory yep. epithelium here within the peribronchial yep. metaplasia. Here again, our mucinous epithelium, completely negative. And here is the CDX2. Nuclear positivity. Nuclear positivity. Now, as you know, sometimes you do immunostains, especially as you reface the block and you're getting down to very little left in the tissue. Which it looks like this is scant now. We don't have much there, but we do have CDX2 positivity. Wow. Okay. So I guess it's a slam dunk. So it must Weird. be metastatic, yeah. colonic. I mean, a late metastasis, I guess it could happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would assume that she would have had the colon lesion resected, right, if it was a cancer. Yeah, she probably, she probably would remember a colonic resection. Maybe it was done uh, laparoscopically. Mucosal resection. Maybe a mucosal resection. So I don't know. But uh, signed it out as mucinous adenocarcinoma consistent with metastatic colon cancer. Was that a mistake, Max? Well, what happened? I mean, usually when, yeah. we, when, when, when time matter. plays yeah. out, you time realize will, if it yeah. was a mistake or not. So time is a truth sayer. It's true. So what happened? The clinician called and said the patient never had a colon cancer. There was a tubular adenoma mm. she had in screening. No high grade dysplasia? No. No mucinous? No. Mm. Nothing. So we have an older patient with a large five centimeter mass. No history of previous no adenocarcinoma. Tumor anywhere else in the no body. tumor anywhere else. CDX2 positive, CK20. CDX2 positive, CK20 positive. Is this a primary mucinous adenocarcinoma of the lung? Well, that is the question. How can we possibly prove it? And do we have to? I think that's the answer. And that brings up the pearl. This pearl of pulmonary pathology is that with mucinous adenocarcinoma of the lung, you should not obtain immunohistochemical stains. It's a waste. It's a waste, and it only gets you into trouble. It's a waste because you waste tissue for potential molecular studies. Right. And it gets you into trouble because you see the positive CK20, you see the positive CDX2, and you say, oh, that must be a metastatic adenocarcinoma from the GI tract. Don't do it. But the reality is about 50% of lung mucinous adenocarcinomas show this immunoprofile. Right. And you might say, some of you are out there saying, wait a minute, molecular studies on mucinous adenocarcinoma, are you crazy? Everyone knows they're... KRAS positive, and there are no targetable, actionable drugs for KRAS. KRAS mutation. Well, there are. So the KRAS mutation, new or hot off the presses, there's a KRAS specific mutation, G12C. G12C. Specific KRAS mutation. That is being studied right now and is showing favorable results. So we're going to see down the line targetable KRAS mutations, and you may be asked to pursue mucinous adenocarcinoma from molecular studies. Exactly. So we told you here first, sorry, another one you got to think about when you're choosing molecular panels. Now, let me ask you something, Kevin. How can you be assured of a diagnosis of adenocarcinoma if this is all you have on the biopsy, you've got normal lung parenchyma, and then you've got this little tuft of mucinous epithelium. I look at that and I'm highly suspicious for adenocarcinoma, but not everybody would look at that and say, I'm highly suspicious for mucinous adenocarcinoma because the cytology is so bland, yeah. Yeah. right? And, well, and if this is adenocarcinoma, why is this not adenocarcinoma in situ? Right, mucinous adenocarcinoma in situ. <laughs> If non-mucinous adenocarcinoma in situ is rare, the mucinous form is exceedingly rare. Exceedingly rare. So if one thing doesn't exist, what's even more non-existent than that? <laughs> <laughs> True story. That's another pearl you gotta, you got to watch. So 
the, the, the caveat on mucinous epithelium in the lung, if you see tall columnar mucinous epithelium and you see more than, I don't know, 10 cells in a row, it's mucinous adenocarcinoma. Especially when on the opposite side of this alveolar wall, you have normal benign appearing pneumocytes. Exactly. This is not a reactive process. It's not a metaplastic process. Right. Now, we told you the pearl. Don't order immunostains on mucinous adenocarcinoma of the lung. There is one caveat and only one. When you have a small amount of tumor like this and you're looking for a little reassurance that this is malignant, yeah. if you do a CDX2 and it happens to be one of the 50% of tumors that's positive for CDX2, you can feel very confident in making a malignant diagnosis because CDX2 is not part of the reactive metaplastic condition in lung and, and, and the and reactive lung epithelium. So you can use CDX2 as a marker for malignancy nice. in mucinous lesions. Nice. So maybe just lung. one immunostain. In this setting, you could get away with just one, but I would say for in most general, cases, no. you don't need any immunostains. You call this mucinous adenocarcinoma. So the scenario I want to give you is our, our viewers out there say uh, tomorrow they get this tiny biopsy. I mean, it's one tuft. In other words, like, like 10 just alveolar, this just tuft. this one tuft. That's all that's in the biopsy. And they're going, I know that Max and Kevin said that this was cancer and, and I should call it cancer, but I'm nervous about it. Get the CDX2. It'll be positive and now you can use evidence that CDX2 is not expressed in reactive things in the lung. It's a, it's a neoplastic marker. So use that going forward and fulfill all your dreams. That's right. Well, that's how nerdy we are. Yeah, because this is what we dream about yep. on a regular basis. <laughs> Crazy. Well, we hope you uh, enjoyed this, this pearl of pulmonary pathology. And uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. And we look forward to the next session.